Now for us, eating is just a routine to nourish the body and maybe have a good time. But for our ancestors, a meal was more than a satisfaction of this physiological need for food. Few people remember it now, but food and all related things had another sacred and mysterious side. Did the nomads have their own secrets and mysteries related to cooking and eating food? And what's the phenomenon of Kazakh traditional cuisine? More than just food. Kazakh cuisine is heavily mixed with ritual motifs. Food as a medicine. I'll tell you that whey has also been used as a medicinal product. Secret diet of nomadic warriors. But Turks ate liver before battles, and after that they became fearless. Living in Kazakhstan, I've noticed a lot of meat dishes around me. Kazakh cuisine has a lot of meat. Everyone, everywhere eats meat. It seems people here have special, I would even say sacred attitude towards food. This is Daniel Bestiden, and we're searching for mystery again. Today, we will try to learn the secrets and traditions of nomadic cuisine. For this, I was invited to visit one very hospitable Kazakh family. Let's go. Wow, hi guys. Hi, Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Hi. Hi. Okay, great. So we can jump in, yeah? You'll be my Thank you guys. Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, you look great. You've dressed up for the occasion. That's good to see. Okay, we go this way. Yes? Okay. Oh, hello. 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 When it comes to food, there's a world of difference between the modern man of the 21st century and those who lived on Earth about two or three hundred years ago. Nowadays, there's such a long chain of intermediaries between food producers and consumers, and consumers that people actually believe that steaks and meat packaging grow on trees and milk is poured from high-tech sterile taps in factories. In the past, to keep from starving, people had to hunt and kill animals, find and dig up plants, or grow something for a long time with their own labor. Contrary to popular belief, nomads ate more than just meat. After all, the steppe is not just rich with flocks, but also with other nutritious products. Meadow herbs with wild garlic and onions, fruits and berries of the Asian foothills, where apples, sea buckthorn and hawthorn barberries, and wild raspberries grow. The rivers and lakes were full of fish. Author and food blogger Maxim Grinkevich has spent many years studying recipes and culinary traditions around the world. Kazakh cuisine didn't remain unnoticed by him. Uh, we have different regions in our country. In Altai Mountains and the surrounding areas, anyone can find berries or mushrooms or everything else. Let's repeat a well-known fact that Kazakh people who lived on the shores of the Aral Sea, when it was still there, fished and ate a lot of fish. Nomads practiced agriculture under favorable conditions. They also gardened and grew cereals such as millet, oats, wheat, and added them to their food. It is worth mentioning the traditional feast dish Naores Koshe, which is still enjoyed today. It is cooked from various types of grains with meat and sour milk products. A variety of dough products such as ritual flatbread called shilpek and the famous Kazakh baursaks were cooked from processed wheat and other grains. 
Manas Skak is not only a prominent chef who can cook traditional Kazakh dishes, he also knows the culinary history of his people. Kazakh people are very good at farming. Kazakh people were very good at farming. I mean, they grew wheat. Because, you know, bread is a really sacred product for us. Well, nomadic people have always used grains and wheat. They always had some in storage. Even when they were moving into another part of the territory, they had prepared stocks. They cultivated wheat seasonally, processed it, kept it in storage and ate it all winter long. Giovanni de Pine del Gapin, Italian Franciscan monk, traveler and actual spy of the Pope, carefully studied the customs and life of the nomads of the mid-13th century. In his notes, he wrote, they believe in one God, Tengri, who is the creator of everything visible and invisible. Their diet was surprisingly simple and nutritious. In the water, they boiled the millet, grind it down so they not eat, but rather drink it and every one of them drinks a cup or two of it in the morning and that's all they eat during the day. And in the evening, each of them gets a little meat and they eat meat stew. I mean, what did they eat in ancient times? Just some basic products. They surely ate vegetables, fruits, meat and drank high quality dairy. In his book of the marvels of the world, another famous medieval traveler, Venetian merchant Marco Polo, described another secret ingredient in the nomad's food. They also have powdered milk, thick as dough. They take it with them, put it in water and stir it until dissolved and then drink. Local residents have prepared this original product for military campaigns as well as for winter. Kazakh people in the 21st century also eat it with great pleasure. And this is actually the Kazakh court, a highly nutritious product that is quite healthy and even healing. That's what Marco Polo told about in his book. It's quite salty. What is court? Let me give you detailed information about it. This is a fermented milk product produced from, let's say, kefir from Iran. That is, first we take milk, boil it, and then add a fermentation starter. There are special devices for this, a kind of cheesecloth, yes, they made of fabric. Well, people poured iron into them, filtered it, and obtained whey. I'll tell you that whey has also been used as a medicinal product. It is good for those who have intestinal diseases, who have gastric diseases. You can even wash your hair with it to improve hair growth. Kazakh people have many sayings and proverbs about food. For example, bad food, source of illness. Historically, many diseases were believed to be coming from malnutrition. Another example, if your eyes hurt, restrain your hands. If your stomach hurts, restrain your appetite. In other words, it was important to be moderate in everything. However, the principle of moderation hasn't excluded a large variety of dishes for all occasions and for any reason whatsoever. In this sense, nomads could possibly surpass the ancient Greeks and French kings. Recently, researchers have recovered more than 200 ancient recipes. And this work is far from over. We can mention sernye, the favorite dish of Chinggis Khan, the fresh meat of a young lamb baked in a lamb's stomach. Here's the method of cooking. A deep pit was dug in the ground. It was filled with hot charcoals and prepared ingredients. The meat was covered with a new portion of coals and soil, and a fire was lit up over this place. They cooked this dish for hours. With this dish, Mongolian warriors showed that they were sure they would come back alive from the battlefield 
all their campaigns. It's a delicious and nutritious meat that melts in the mouth awaited them. Nomads had many of those semi-ritual dishes. Kazakh cuisine is heavily mixed with ritual motifs. It has liver dishes, for example, Jai Shurek, yes. Liver, as a matter of fact, symbolized courage and bravery. But there's eight liver before battles, and after that, they became fearless. There are many such nuances in Kazakh cooking, and they are all connected to certain circumstances of life. There are a lot of such dishes. If a mother missed her married daughter, then she could make a special dish called ulpershek. It was made from the heart. This is an unusual tradition. This dish was sent to the daughter's new family. The mother-in-law accepted this dish and became aware that her in-law missed her daughter, so she would send her daughter-in-law home for a day or few days to spend some time with the mother. There are many such traditions. Another dish of the Kazakh cuisine, which uh, I find quite exotic, some of you may even find it shocking, is the head of a lamb. It has been one of the iconic dishes here since ancient times and was presented to the most honored guests. Even now, when I go to restaurants and toys here, it seems to be an integral part of every Kazakh feast. Also, this tradition is very practical. Excuse me, I, I'm really curious, why do you put that piece of meat over here on? It's a lamb's head. It is served to respected guests. An incision is specially made on its forehead so that the family lives in harmony and abundance. And we also cover this incision with a piece of fat. This is our folk tradition. It turns out that scientists have already proven that there are several varieties of meat in the head of a lamb. To the outer skin part, tongue, yes, brain, and even cheeks, very meaty ones, yes. In other words, lamb's head have different muscle structures containing different vitamins. It turns out that one lamb's head could replace a whole meat platter, saturating your body with a variety of healthy supplements. But in the traditions of nomadic culture, food is much more than just a source of protein, fats, carbohydrates, and vitamins. In almost every culture worldwide, there is a concept of a ritual feast. These are meals to commemorate certain national holidays, as well as those associated with events in a particular family, such as birthdays, weddings, funerals. But in Kazakh cuisine, almost every meal could be ritual. Any meal could bear very profound spiritual significance. Here is what the historian and ethnographer Dasenbek Katan told us. In the Tagam, Tamak, Dem Digan, Tulan Digan Devil, Kushpuler De, Jalpa, Dem Dispo Digan. Food and feasts were considered sacred concepts among the Kazakhs. Come the Dabradamin, Tavataspoza, Brigade, Tamajesi, Dem Disposa, Solo. People who ate at the same table became near related from then on, and they could not fight and fall out anymore. According to tradition, they could never harm each other again. Similar customs exist in the cultures of many nations. Kazakh people proudly claim we sat at one dastarhan, or we ate from his hands. Dasterhan itself is a table with very short legs, so it's convenient to eat at it, leaning on your back, reclining. But just like everything else in Kazakh culture, it has a deeper meaning. Dasterhan is also the food on the table, an abundant feast. 
In Kazakh culture, a table of any size with food on it is called dasterhan. Also, this word means the whole dinner ritual in Kazakhstan and the whole of Central Asia. A common meal is the greatest demonstration of trust and respect between people in many cultures in the world. The integral part of secular and religious rites. Early Christians refer to evening meetings where they prayed and shared bread as agape. This Greek word stands for the highest form of love and for patricians of the Roman Empire, festivities were the main means of political control. Nomads, in turn, also practiced a sophisticated kitchen diplomacy. In our tradition, the process of trapeze is not just a In our tradition, a meal is not just eating and saturating. It was a very special occasion where important things, such as some treaties or some cultural deals, were discussed. At the dinner, table people could even discreetly put an end to discords. That's because our people are not straightforward. We convey everything to the guest with hints during the meal. Imagine being served a lamb's head. Wow! I mean, I feel like a really honored guest. But don't get too excited. Examine the dish carefully, or you could be the real mutton Такой пример хочу привести, что если не нравится гость, не желаемый гость. I want to give an example. If the host didn't like the guest, if the guest was unwanted, they could be served a shoulder piece of meat or a lamb's head with teeth. And the guest understood that they were not welcome here. Those were subtle hints. Nonetheless, meat has been one of the most important ingredients of Kazakh food since ancient times. Historically, meat dishes accounted for up to 90% of the meals of steppe inhabitants. They ate at mutton, horse meat, and less often meat of camels and wild birds. And due to Islamic religious restrictions, they didn't eat pork. Now imagine that 90% of what you eat is meat. Not everybody could digest such a diet. How did the people of the Great Steppe manage to eat large quantities of animal protein without health problems? We address this question to the nutritionist specialist Laila Akprajeva. Let's talk about the food our ancestors ate. They said it is contained a lot of dough and meat. For example, it was kind of bad for the stomach. But actually, if we look closer at the roots of our history, then yes, they ate a lot of meat and chased it with, let's say, kumis. What is kumis? This is sort of a tan or a ran, sort of a soured milk. These are the fermented dairy products. Kumis is a fermented drink made from horse milk. Amazingly, there's about 40 varieties of kumis in Kazakh cuisine. Each region has its own recipe that was passed on for generations. Even though the taste may vary a bit, kumis fulfills its goal 100% by quenching thirst and helping digestion. like a new person once you drink them. Запивали кумисом, а он как раз таки расщеплял весь состав этого They washed down the food with kumis, which helped to digest these products. And after that, they rode their horses, which means they were physically active. But what are we doing? We cook meat after six in the evening, we go to visit somebody, we eat too much and end the meal with some cakes. By the way, what about desserts? In the cooking books, 
of the Kazakh national cuisine, published in the Soviet period, there were many original sweets. Хочу сказать о десертах наших сладостях, что I want to talk about our desserts, our sweets. We often hear that there are no desserts, no sweets in our cuisine. No, it's not true. Our grannies, our ancestors, made unbelievable things out of this very sour milk. They made varieties of irimshik and cheeses. They made sweet cheeses, unsweetened ones, cooked like condensed milk. Now they're cooked and uncooked cheeses too. They also made irimshik and they ate a lot of honey. But back to meat. It's fatty, energy dense, and nutritious. Cooked meat, dried meat, grilled meat, smoked meat. For a long time, it was believed that these products are not healthy. But recently, scientists have found out that this is far from the truth. And now there are nutritional plants whose followers adhere to a diet very similar to the traditional food of nomads. This is a diet that includes a lot of fat and protein without excess carbohydrates. Roughly speaking, this is just less sugar. Yes, it's cool, but actually, that's how our ancestors ate, if you think about it. I mean, they ate a lot of meat and dairy products, and they washed it down with fermented milk. The centuries-old experience of nomads in the fermentation and processing of food also proved to be in great demand in the modern nutritional science. People try to keep food edible as long as possible. Modern nutrition science proves that fermented foods that are stored for a long period of time naturally, without additional chemicals, have a special kind of beneficial bacteria. And our gastrointestinal tract is a home for billions of different bacteria that are responsible for our conditions, our immunity, and our health. Few people know, but the secret of the step diet was not only in ingredients of various dishes or the ritual of meat preparation. Kitchen tools were also important. Without the right utensils, the food wouldn't turn out that great. Since ancient times, people of the steppe cooked meat and other ingredients in special pots called kazans. This seemingly simple object hides a whole philosophy. In some sense, a kazan is not only a metal cauldron with a semispherical bottom, but also a model of the universe and a symbol for such concepts as family, earth, and home. Hence, a family kazan in its sacredness is comparable to shanarak of a yurt. It is an absolute necessity in the home of every Eurasian nomad. Nikolai Elminsky, who was a friend of the prominent Kazakh educator Aburai Altansarin, wrote, Kazakh people are skilled surgeons. The carcasses were cut and divided into certain parts. The offal and intestines of the cattle were cleaned. Yurts had special places for cooking. The right side was considered the male side, and the left side was considered the female side. Food was cooked in a designated part of the yurt. The meat was cooked in a kazan installed on a trivet in the middle of the yurt. Food cooked in a kazan is believed to have some special properties. This may be due to the fact that it is cooked over an open live fire. To cook a large amount of meat, Kazakh people used toy kazan. The art of serving, the so-called tabak, was particularly important. Eventually, the meat for the guests was divided into portions for each person according to merit and honors. Uh, 
If long-awaited guests come, we put it in the Kazan first. As soon as the meat was brought to the table, all chatter stopped. It was so silent you can hear a fly buzzing. Eyes began to shine with joy and anticipation. You could hear strong jaws chewing on juicy meat. Everyone enjoyed meat. Everyone was focused on eating food. As they say, it's good news you hear, it's time to eat. People reproached those who didn't get to the table on time. Food had to be eaten before it got cold. Another curious Kazakh tradition is called sarkat. It means when the guests are leaving, they are given some food, remaining food, from Dastarhan. So next time you are at the Kazakh feast, don't hesitate and ask for some sarkat. Otherwise, you may offend the hosts by rejecting it. At modern Kazakh feasts, guests often collect sarkat for themselves just before leaving. But initially, what was given to you after the feast had a special meaning and was supposed to match your status. Once upon a time, people threw a toy, a big feast. There were a lot of vessels full of kumis. A lot of cattle were brought to the slaughter. At the end of the feast, a sack with a piece of meat was tied to each vessel. Sacks contained not only legs, but also ribs and neck bones and big parts of the carcass. All of this was given to guests. Everyone got their share. An old man, who was over 60 years old, returned home with such a sack. He gave some party favors to the member of his family, opened his sack and found a leg and lots of meat inside. No matter how old the man was, he was considered to be the son-in-law for the people of that village. A son-in-law was just the son-in-law, no matter how old he might be. He remained a son-in-law. His share was a brisket. He saw the lag and figured out that finally, in his old age, they began to respect him. He posted to those who weren't at the feast that he had been given a lag. As soon as his family began to eat, a messenger came in and said, Sorry, we mixed up the sacks, this is yours. Having said this, he gave the old man his sack and took the previous one. The old man opened the second sack, there was a brisket. Oh well, he thought, what's the moral here? To each his own, as they say. The ancient Kazakh cuisine turned out to be healthy and proper. The nomads were able to get the best of nature just by watching it and used it wisely by listening to their own bodies. This is the wisdom that has helped nomadic civilization not only to survive in the rough steppe, but also to become one of the greatest in the world. Well, this was probably the most delicious research trip that I have conducted. But this is just a glimpse of traditional Kazakh cuisine. It was Daniel Besseden who was searching for mystery, and I'll see you next time. Well, you've made a great poetry reading. You can be on TV and star yourself in your own personal show. Okay? <laughs>
Yes, just keep on going. Keep on reading the poetry, okay?